Hello my friends, my name is Forge and welcome to another Minecraft video. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a brand new tool that was just released this week and it is called the Universal Minecraft Tool, created by Oprise LP. This is definitely a pretty cool software and I'm going to show you everything about this. So first off, we have our friend Oprise here to explain what this new tool is and what it's going to be useful for. All right, I love talking about this. First off, thanks for having me on your channel, man. This is awesome. So the Universal Minecraft tool is an all-in-one suite of Minecraft apps that give you complete control of your Minecraft world saves. Comes with a brand new NBT editor and converter built from the ground up to work with every edition and virtually any version of Minecraft. When you first open up the Universal Minecraft tool, it's gonna ask you to sign in with your email and password. But however, you can only sign in if you already bought a subscription. But once you're signed in, you have to choose a program. You have an MBT editor or a converter. Now Matt, besides the converter and MBT editor, are you planning on adding even more apps? You bet. So at launch, the Universal Minecraft tool has two programs, the NBT editor and the converter, but this is only the beginning. I have plans to add even more apps to it that will really, really blow your mind, and I can't wait to share more with the community. The World Converter will support several different platforms, including Java, Bedrock, 360, PS3, and Wii U. And the best part is, if you convert a world to Bedrock, then you can put that world on Realms and transfer it to your One, your Series X, PS5, or even Nintendo Switch. So those platforms are basically included in this as well, which is definitely pretty cool. But let's say I want to convert a 360 world. Well, if I select 360, if you have a USB installed, then it's going to display all the worlds that you have on the USB device. But however, you can also browse for a world file if you do not have the world on the USB. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to choose The Last Jedi, which is a hide and seek map that I built a few years ago. And we're going to click open world. And next up we can choose on where you want to convert it to. We're going to convert this to bedrock. And another cool thing about this is you can output it to a different version. So let's say you don't want it outputting to 1.19.20 and you want to convert it to let's say 1.16. Well if you select 1.16 then it's going to go in that world format. But if you were to select the latest version, then you would get the extended underground. Which means you get the new caves, you get the new underground features, which is absolutely awesome. But obviously if you're on a super flat world, it's not going to give you any new caves. But we're going to select next. And next up, we resolve some options. Now I will be making a video going into further detail of what all these different features do. But this part of the video is just to show you on what the converter is capable of. But we're going to go ahead and click on next. In this conversion process, it is definitely quite quick. And that's what I love about this. No matter how big your world is or how small your world is, it's always going to be a fast conversion, which I really do love. But we're going to select save world and should automatically open up where all of your bedrock worlds are. And we're going to keep it as the same name and we're going to click save. And our world has not been saved. And here we are back in Minecraft. And if I click play and I were to scroll down, then you will see our converted map. And here you are within the world, but however it didn't spawn us where we need to be, but within the program when you are converting the world, you can specify the coordinates of where you're going to spawn in, which is very, very useful. Now this is a map I built years ago, way back when the last Jedi came out, but as far as I can see, everything is converted properly, which is a really big deal. Because whenever it comes to a lot of converters, sometimes they don't really work all that great. Like back when I used MCC 12 chest, the conversions, they weren't all that great because there would be some things missing, some things wouldn't work properly. But with this new program, you won't have to worry about any of those issues, which is really, really good. But however, that doesn't mean that there won't be any issues because since this is a new program, there will be some bugs. But one of the big issues is regarding map art. So as you can see, we have a bunch of item frames. But these were actually item frames with maps. So if you have any maps and item frames, those maps will not convert. So that is not yet supported. But as far as I know, that is going to be one of the next things to come. So you have no fear over that. All of your map art will be available soon. But for now, Oprise, can you tell us a little bit more how the converter works? Yeah, no problem. Normally, every Minecraft world is stuck on the edition that it was originally created on. You can't move it. But the Universal Minecraft Tools Converter allows you to convert any world to another edition or version. 
so you can play it on another device. So for example, you can play an older Xbox 360 world that maybe you had really fond memories of, but you don't play anymore. You can play it now today on iPhone, take a Java world, move it to Windows 10. I mean, the possibilities are endless. There are literally dozens of conversion types between the additions, hundreds if you account for all the differences in versions. The converter will scan the input world and intelligently pick the right output chunk format so that the terrain regeneration is correct. Something that is a deal breaker for most people. It can also recalculate lighting, which is difficult and also essential for legacy worlds. Otherwise, the world would be completely dark. This converter can fully convert most tile entities and items, and they will even keep their data like enchantments, custom names, attribute modifiers, dyed colors, and much, much more. Now next up, let's go over the NDT editor, which will allow you to edit Java, Bedrock, Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii U worlds. And as I mentioned, if you do have Realm, then you can transfer that to Switch, the Xbox, and PlayStation consoles. But let's say we want to edit a Bedrock world. Well, after we click on Bedrock, we can then choose the world to edit. For instance, let's go and edit Logicraft World 1. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose Open World. Now upon opening up the world, you're going to see a few options. You got a chunk locator, world settings, and some drop down menus for your players, your maps, and all files. But I would like to mention that the chunk locator, this is not yet available. This will be one of the first things that will be coming in future updates. Before we go any further, O-Prize, for those who don't know, can you explain what is NBT editing? Great question. NBT is just the name of a file format used by Minecraft to save your worlds. Normally, you can't change it or do anything with it, but an NBT editor can make changes to that file to trick Minecraft into thinking you last saved it in a different way. So for example, you can trick Minecraft into thinking you have a villager with a custom trade that gives you a max enchanted sword, for example. It's also extremely useful for making quick changes to your world settings, such as turning off cheats or commands, or changing the world seed. Uh, the options honestly are pretty much endless. We have world setting. From within here, you'll be able to edit pretty much everything about your world. From your abilities in the world, which includes things like attacking mobs, attacking players, build mode, flying mode, or invulnerability. And plus you can change your fly speed and your walk speed in a few other settings. And then we have experiments. And by experiments, they mean the experimental toggles. Have you ever enabled the toggles to do anything in your world? So we have experiments is a reuse which is zero because this world has never added experiments and save the toggled experiments yet again since i've never done an experiment never enabled any add-ons in the world it is going to be set to zero and then we have world policies which is absolutely nothing in there to be honest i'm not even sure what world policies are and then we have last open this version which would have been the last version that this world was opened up in and then we have the minimum compatible clan version which would be the base version of whatever you're using and then you have all of your basic features regarding the world. If this is a flat world, you can choose what the blocks are. Oh, I love this so much. So you can choose what biome ID you have. I think one might be planes. You can even edit what block layers you have. So for instance, for a regular flat world, it goes from grass to two layers of dirt to bedrock. And that's basically all we have. But if you wanted to change the amount of dirt, like let's say 33, then you can absolutely do that. So that means that we'll have 33 layers of dirt to build in. Or if you don't want to use dirt at all, then you can change this to a diamond block. So that means that you can have 33 layers of diamond blocks. Oh, this can be so fun to make flat worlds with. I would really love to see an app where you can actually create your flat world and see what layers you're using instead of typing it all out. It would just be so, so useful. Next up, let's go down to players. Now this will display all the players that's ever been in your world. You're going to be the local player. And once you've chosen the player, then it's going to show you everything that's regarding that player. And just like we saw in the world settings, we even have the abilities of the player, such as the ability to attack mobs, you attack players, being able to build, and so on and so forth. As I mentioned, this was all in the world settings. But then you also got armor. So it will tell you on what kind of armor you're wearing. So for my instance, I'm not wearing any armor at all. But I believe the top one is the helmet. The second one is the chest plate. The third one is the leggings. And the fourth one is the feet. Next up is attributes. Now from within here, you can change things like your max health, your absorption level, your movement speeds, or your attack damage. If I were to scroll down a little bit further, we got our dimension IDs, like which dimension are you in currently? 
For me, I am in the overworld. But if I wanted to make this the nether, then I'll make that a one. Or at the end, it would be a two. You can change what your game mode is. One being creative, two being adventure, and zero being survival mode. And next up, we have our maps. But as of right now, there is no map viewer, so you can't see what's on the map. But you can see tags, like what dimension the map is in, if it's fully explored, if the map's locked or where skeleton is, and a few others. And finally, we're on to all files, which will show you all the files that are currently in your world folder. That's going to be it for all the features that we have currently. But Matt, can you explain to everyone what features are coming up next? I know it's surprising, but believe it or not, there's a lot more that can be put into the converter. So the first thing to go into the converter is full entity support. Next will be map item conversion. And for the long term, I'll be focused on adding support for the new updates to Minecraft as they come out. This is really a living, breathing piece of software that will change with Minecraft over time. But let's not stop at the converter. The NBT editor has a ton of upcoming features. The first thing I'll be focused on there is the visual chunk locator. That way you can view your world within the program and you can really easily find the chunk that you're trying to edit. Uh, after that will come action extensions, which are community made extensions like I was talking about earlier, but these ones can automatically perform the edits for you. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, the universal Minecraft tool, it definitely is extremely useful. It's definitely a really cool piece of software. And I do recommend trying it out if you're looking for a good program. And if you do want to get it, then there will be a link in the description. But for the time being, let's go ahead and talk to Matt. And let's talk about pricing. I think people are going to be very pleasantly surprised when they hear the price of the Universal Minecraft tool. My previous software, the Universal Minecraft Converter, was $15 a month, and it couldn't convert anything past 1.18, and you couldn't choose your output version, and there was a lot of things missing with it. This new tool supports up to 1.19 on launch day, has targetable output versions, terrain regen fixing, and comes with the NBT editor at no extra charge. So you're getting way, way more for just $5 a month if you subscribe annually. And you can cancel at any time. Speaking of price, I've decided to create a promo code. Your viewers can use code FORGE15 at checkout and they can receive 15% off. If you buy a year, that's basically a free month. And yet again, that is it for everything regarding this new tool. And as far as I'm concerned, this is definitely a very useful tool. Definitely gonna be very good for map makers, very useful for changing things in your world and I'm definitely a big fan of it. And I would also like to thank GoPrize for joining us in this video to answer some of these important questions. Thanks for having me on, man. This was awesome. I love talking about this. I'm really, really passionate about this. I've been doing this for over 10 years, so this is really a labor of love. So I appreciate all the support that you've shown me over the years. It is awesome, man. So anyways, thanks, guys. But yet again, if you guys do want to get this program, then there will be a link down below in the description. And let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're on here, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. But for now, hope you have a logical day, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.